Well, howdy diddly do there, boyos. Ethnic slur here. What's that? You forgot about me? Well, good. Keep it that way. Since my absence, I have noticed a sharp decline in the amount of videos and general intentional stupidity among the Neo community. So I'm here to change all that for the worse. I got three words for you. Consistent. Quality. Content. If you're interested in any of these three words, then go somewhere else. Because today, we're going to put the final nail in the coffin that is the gaping void of ignorance about all instances of Omyo magic. Because people still ask questions about this on the Reddit that I in no way creep on, and there are still inconsistent and scattered reports about it. So welcome to the complete, final, exhaustive, all-inclusive, comprehensive, extensive, in-depth to the widespread of Omyo magic where we cover each Omyo magic spell individually because the devs don't feel like hiring people who know how to write correct descriptions. But let's get started straight away. First up, there is your damaging Omyo magic. And first in this category, we have Elemental Shots, the simplest of the simple. Every shot spell fires a quick traveling projectile that deals damage of the elemental type that it is named after. Fire, water, wind, earth, and lightning. For a beginner, this damage may seem relatively unimpressive, but elemental shots are not necessarily designed specifically to damage. You see, every elemental shot quickly builds a status effect that corresponds to the element it deals damage in. What are those status effects? That's a good question that the game never actually answers, to my knowledge. I, I, I don't know, I may have just stared at the ceiling during the tutorials, but fret not, my dear Omeo Acolyte, for I shall inform you. Fire damage will apply the Scorched status effect, which causes fire damage over time. As a side tip, if you yourself are caught on fire, you can actually dodge to severely reduce and flat out eliminate your fire status effects. Beware, as some enemies can also do this. Water will apply the saturated status effect, which will reduce the enemy's physical resistances. This effect becomes wildly more exaggerated as you increase in difficulty, but it is generally a very good status effect to have on. Lightning applies the electrified status effect, which slows all speed and movement. Note that this will stack with sloth talismans, which if you don't know about, we we will get to later. Wind applies the... What was it again? The wiki says blustered. Wasn't that the name for the yin-yang thing before? The wind, the wind status effect will lower enemies' attack damage. This seems to be about a 50-ish percent damage output reduction in this particular example, but I'm, I'm fairly certain that there's definitely variation across enemies and difficulties. Earth applies muddied, which has something to do with key. I'm, I'm not sure, it's barely noticeable, but I think it affects how much key an enemy uses when they attack. But what it definitely doesn't fucking do is what the Fexture Life says it does. So, yeah, never listen to that. Now these status effects individually can be quite interesting and fun to use. A normal man without access to the magical arts would typically only ever have one status effect applied, you see. However, as you are now a wizard, you can apply more than one status effect quite easily. And there's a very special extra status effect that is applied when you build up more than one elemental status effect. This status effect is called Confusion. The act of confusion, which is to say applying more than one elemental status ailment, will apply a yin-yang status effect thing called nonplussed. Confusing enemies will be one of your greatest tools as an Omeo mage. When an enemy is nonplussed, they will take a universal drop in all forms of damage resistance. This part of the status effect applies to both humans and yokai. However, when you apply nonplussed onto a yokai, whether it is a boss or not, it will completely eliminate its key bar and it will be unable to gather key for as long as the yin yang symbol is on its status bar. Something you have to realize about this is that when yokai do not have key bars, they can be staggered repeatedly by any form of damage and every impact of damage dealt will cause them to leak small amounts of Amrita, allowing you to build living weapon quickly by attacking such an enemy. And this is all in addition to the two status effects you applied to give it nonplussed. So, elemental shots. The most simple magic you can cast. But not so simple after all, right? You can synergize them together to make great things happen. We got a little sidetrack there, but the information applies to all elemental damage, so keep that in mind going forward. Now, for simplicity's sake, I shall now speak of the advanced elemental attacks just to get all the directly damaging elemental spells over with. Every element gets its own unique type of advanced spells, and they are as follows. Fire gets explosive shot. 
It is fairly self-explanatory and the simplest of the advanced elemental jutsus. You fire a shot, not unlike a fire shot, that travels a bit slower and will explode and affect a modest area upon impact. The damage isn't significantly higher than the fire shot and the elemental status application is seemingly identical at times, but it can be good for firing into a hut or something like that. Water gets geyser shot casting will cause three geysers of water to erupt from the ground in a line in front of you. The placing of these geysers is always a fixed distance away from you, and it's a, a little awkward because you have to worry about spacing. It is actually quite possible to fire it at an enemy right in front of you and miss entirely, but however, it is also possible to hit large enemies more than once with this ability, allowing you to essentially hit with three slightly stronger water shots with one cast and almost definitely apply the water status effect. Lightning gets thunder shot, which is identical in every way to geyser shot, only it makes you look like a new way wannabe. Wind gets Gale Shot, which is by far the most effective elemental jutsu in the game for quickly applying a status effect. Gale Shot will create a, a, a battle line of wind shots in front of you that shall sally forth after a brief pause and hit an enemy many times very quickly. As with most of the advanced elemental jutsus, it is much easier to hit larger enemies with the full potential of the attack. However, you only need to land two or three of the many projectiles on an enemy to actually apply the status effect. Effect. Note that Gale Shot also locks onto a location relatively early in the cast, so if an enemy is flying around all over the place or moving quickly left to right, Gale Shot will struggle to hit. And then finally, Earth gets Groundquake Mine, which you can throw on the ground and use it as a trap for enemies, which would be a colossal waste of your time, or you can use it as a point blank Earth damage spell that you can use to apply a third element to a confused enemy in preparation for a second application of confusion. Maybe you enjoy using it as a trap, but that, that's the safest way I've found to use it so far. There are also Guardian Spirit Talismans in the elemental spectrum of things, which really deserve their own video that I may or may not make. The fascinating facet of these little buggers is that its effectiveness varies wildly based on what guardian spirit you have equipped. It essentially causes your guardian spirit to come out and do what it would normally do if you were in living weapon and hit the triangle and circle key. Now again, this is based on your current active guardian spirit, so thanks to the ability to carry and swap between two guardian spirits on the fly, you actually have access to two versions of this spell at any given time, and they can be by far your most useful and reliable elemental spells. Now on to non-elemental damage magic. It is unfortunately a bit underwhelming, mostly for the fact that they have extremely limited synergetic potential. They also have limited damage scaling options as most damage increases that affect Omeo Magic affect Omeo Magic because the stat in question affects elemental damage, not necessarily Omeo Magic specifically. Probably the more fascinating of the non-elemental damage magic is the Soul Release Talisman. This will wipe the familiarity of your primary weapon and transform the soul of that familiarity into a blade of light that basically gets Suga Tenchos out in an arc in front of you, dealing fairly good damage and high key damage as well. While it is certainly the most damaging of the physical damage magics, it can only be used sparingly as you need to build up familiarity to expend it. While this would certainly make the familiarity bonus speed thingy far more interesting of a stat to roll on your weapons, familiarity provides so much for your weapon damage in this game. And on top of that, there's no expedient way of telling how much your familiarity is in a fight. You need at least 300 of it. Uh, the only way is that I know of is to just open your equipment screen, which is not valid during a fight. And even if you could, it would just be annoying. You you have to keep up with enough as an Omeo Mage as it is. I, I'd experiment with it further, but my Neo days are just about done, so I think I'll, I'll leave that to the next generation. Then you have Key Burst, which just sort of creates a small explosion around your person. Damage is low, but deals fairly good key damage. Nothing spectacular, just sort of hard to hit, especially if you don't have anything affecting cast speed. Think of it like shittier sword key? I don't know. Shockwave talismans are similar to key burst talismans after a fashion, only they trade a good chunk of the damage for becoming much easier to hit with. It's essentially a buff that makes you emit a smaller, less powerful key burst upon using a key pulse. It's good for you if you have mastered the art of key pulsing as a way to keep humans or confused yokai from reacting while you are getting ready for your next attack or repositioning yourself with key pulse dodges. And then, you have probably the most hideously underpowered, disgusting Omeo magic I have ever seen. The Flying Sword Talisman. It is a buff you cast on yourself that damages enemies around you every 2-3 to three seconds for absolutely minuscule amounts of damage. At 99 magic and 99 spirit, 
it deals this much damage. I mean, I'm not gonna say you can't synergize this with other Omeo magic to make it better, because that's kind of the fucking point of Omeo magic, but it's it's somewhat hard to justify having this filling up Omeo magic slots when you are by this level able to just, you know, floopity bop and just kill most enemies using basic attacks with the kinds of things you would have to cast to make this actually worth using. There are better buffs, which we will get to in the next video. Moving on, we now have the debuff section, full of all your tasty, lovely, down and dirty debuffs. What makes these different from the elemental debuffs is that these are instantly applied and are not accompanied by damage of any kind. However, as you will see, that does not make them any less useful. First, we have the legend itself, the near necessity, the sloth talisman. Sloth talismans will severely reduce the overall speed of whatever it hits. This is a massive aid to boss fights and any enemies you have trouble with in general. That giant scary lady who wants to eat you isn't quite as frightening when it's moving in slow motion, is it? And this effect further stacks with lightning's status effect, as I mentioned earlier, so if you bring some lightning into the fight as well, you can slow enemies to an absolute crawl. They're, I mean, they're, they're basically not even moving anymore. I, I, mean, I mean, technically everything is moving, that's, that's what the universe is, it's movement, but, you know. Relatively speaking, this is this is almost rock levels of movement. Oh, and the, and the length of the slot talisman scales quite a bit with your overall Omeo magic power affected by your Omeo magic stat. Nearly as widely used as a slot talisman, especially among people who make builds and want to show off how much damage they're doing, is the weakness talisman. This will drastically reduce the enemy's physical defenses. Beloved by Omeo haters for being quick and easy to apply. It can also be simultaneously loved by Omyo melee enthusiasts, as it stacks with the water status effect and the confusion status effect physical defense reductions. Combined together, you can be dealing several times more damage than you thought you were even capable of dealing. Next, we have the Life Seal Talisman. This talisman reduces the key recovery speed of enemies. Mostly pointless against yokai, but interesting to use against human bosses in conjunction with Earth's status effect. There are also Purging Talismans, using them completely eliminates the status effects on an enemy, positive and negative. Since only Omyo mages actually buff themselves, these are basically pointless 99.9% .9 of the time. These do not get rid of the permanent positive status effects that are given to red enemies in the latter difficulties of the game, by the way. The only use I have found for them is in PvP and when you buff bosses because sometimes uh, they can turn debuffs into positive buffs. I, 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 for some reason, they don't really tell you that it does, but it clearly does. I, and why? I don't know. And then we come to the Vigorate Talismans. These reduce enemy attack power. If you're making some kind of a crazy tank build of some kind, you could use this in conjunction with the wind status effect to reduce damage even further and make it much, 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 much easier to take hits. I'm more of a, um, they can't hurt me if they're stagger locked or dead kind of person, but hey, I'm a Dark Souls vet, what can I do? Then to close the debuff section, I add something which I wasn't even sure where to place. The Mind Control Talisman. Now when I drop that name, it sounds fucking awesome. I mean, Mind Control. I'm thinking converting an enemy into a minion for an amount of time, maybe we'll do that. I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking, am I collecting a yokai Pokemon now? The answer to these questions is fuck you. It only works on non-boss humans and it makes them do an emote. What? Well, hello there. I'm Elfenstein, the dude who makes this crappy stuff. If you want to hang out, I'm going to just let you know that I have a stream that I stream on relatively often. If you'd like to support this channel, then of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I highly appreciate it. But come on over to my Twitch and talk with me every once in a while, as I, as I do very much enjoy your company. Link at the top of the description. And if you have Amazon Prime, you can subscribe to me for free over there. And that supports me with actual money that I could use to, to eat stuff. So I'll like you even even more than I already do, which is probably not even possible. I mean, how does that work?